together for life. With the drought coming, much of their prey is beginning to migrate to greener pastures, which means fewer hunting opportunities. Since each lion needs about 12 pounds of meat a day, or about 8,000 calories, this pride can't afford a botched hunt. But the buffalo is a difficult adversary. They're hyper alert to danger. Sleeping only an hour a night, rarely more than a couple minutes at a time. And they're armed with some of the deadliest weapons on the savannah. Sharp horns that can span over three feet. And they can easily kill a lion. And buffalo protect their own. With smaller and weaker members nestled safely in the middle of the herd. So in order to succeed against Buffalo, a lion needs to employ teamwork and strategy. A lioness can catch a buffalo, but they can't bring it down by themselves. On the other side, a lioness could certainly beat a gazelle, but it can't catch a gazelle. It's not fast enough, so he's got this really tough. You need friends, you need friends. If these lions are going to share a meal of buffalo, each of them has to play its position well. The hunt begins when two flushers charge the herd, forcing it into a panicked run. Then one of the pride's two strikers scans the herd singling out the young or sick buffalo, or one that strayed from the herd. In a matter of seconds, she's found the target. Nestled in the middle of the herd is a buffalo cow with one broken horn. Any fight serious enough to break something as durable as a horn probably did more serious damage to this buffalo. The average lioness can reach a top speed of 35 miles per hour. 
But the Strikers, the fastest and most agile lionesses in the Pride, can reach speeds of 45 miles per hour. One Striker races past one of the Flushers and launches into an attack. She does this with incredibly engineered claws. Each paw has four sharp forward-facing claws and a backward-facing dew claw, each sitting in its own ball and socket joint, independently suspended. So as the buffalo tries to buck the lioness, she's able to continually adjust her hold. And that's no easy task. This lioness is being dragged with an unbelievable three Gs of force. It's like the claws on each paw are trying to hold on to a rocket just after launch. Soon, reinforcements arrive. Two more lions jump on the buffalo's back and use their combined weight to try to bring it down. The 1,700-pound buffalo is now carrying three lions, weighing a total of 900 pounds. One lioness digs in with her massive canines while another covers the buffalo's nose and mouth with her own mouth. Within 15 seconds, the buffalo experiences the onset of oxygen deprivation. He starts to lose consciousness. His muscles relax. Finally, it's over. But after all that hard work, the star huntress may not even get to eat. That is until the reigning male lets her. He'll eat 40 pounds of buffalo before the females get a bite. The male is predominantly the king, as it were the head honcho, the big cheese. Prides typically have two or three males, but this pride has only one. He protects the pride. He sires the cubs. And he patrols their territory, ensuring that no other lions encroach. He doesn't participate in the hunt as much as the females do, although he's the first to eat. It's good to be king. It was a particularly good kill. The 1,000 pounds of meat will net the pride 700,000 calories, enough to sustain them for nearly a week. The pride eats. chilling sound interrupts them. It's a sound that spells trouble. The kind of trouble that could change this pride forever. Pretty good for this pride. They've just eaten several hundred pounds of buffalo and are preparing to sleep it off. When they're interrupted by a roar in the distance. Intruder is approaching. Oh. 
from the sound of it, a large male lion. But he's not interested in stealing their buffalo carcass. He's come to challenge the resident male and take over the pride. It's been a couple of years since the resident male was himself the challenger. Like most males, at two years old, when his mane first started to grow, he reached sexual maturity and was thrown out of the pride he was born into. This serves an evolutionary purpose. Since he's related to all the females in his pride, he must lead in order to mate. But as a teenager, he wasn't strong enough to depose a resident male. So he roamed for more than a year, waiting for his moment to take over a pride. Two years ago, he did. Now, from the sound of the distant roar, the shoe is on the other foot. Personally, I've heard of lions roaring from six miles away. And when you realize how far away it is, like, God, but this seems so close. A lion's roar isn't just heard, it's felt. It begins when muscles between his ribs work like bellows pushing air at 50 miles per hour over massive vocal folds, causing them to vibrate. But what gives the roar its power is the speaker cabinet between the roof of the mouth and the back of the throat. The sound resonates here, increasing in speed and intensity. And in this speaker cabinet, the lion can also manipulate his roar's pitch, the way an opera singer changes a note. The result is a sound that can reach 115 decibels, as loud as a rock concert. Another roar comes from much closer this time. A series of staccato grunts with clear beginnings and endings, which make the roaring lion easy to locate. The name of the game is intimidation. I don't think they'd rather kill each other. They don't want to get hurt either. They know if they get wounded, they're pretty much stuffed. Now, both resident and challenger have a choice. Fight or flee. But it's no longer that simple. Suddenly, he sees that he's not just facing one lion, but two. Explosive defense only increases the tension in the pride and sets in motion a further and ominous isolation of the old female.
that are predators and that are prey. And then there are enemies. ancient times, Africa has been the place where huge cats ruled the flooded forest and swamps of prehistory. It was a violent time when the nightmare of massive predators stalked the land and nothing was safe. Well, those nightmares are back. There is an unusual pride of lions stalking these swamps. Cats that live in water and hunt a single herd of Cape buffalo. Evolution favors predators that can hunt a range of prey. But these lions are defying that trend by becoming specialists, relentless hunters of this one prey. The explosive sky spitting fire from the heavens an unsettling prelude to the battle ahead. When two old adversaries come head to head, the conflict is a war of wills. The outcome will hang in the balance. There is an island in Africa, a place where the ghostly shapes of over a thousand buffalo drift over the domain of the resident pride of lions. The Saro pride are buffalo hunters, made up of nine lionesses of enormous bulk. Thick necks and heavy chests define them. Features that serve them well for this unique hunting. Amongst them, a silver-eyed female, possibly blinded in combat with the buffalo. She carries her battle scars well and leads many of the hunts. The heaviest set is a skew-eared female and the twins, two identical lionesses that often give birth to cubs at the same time and always hunt together. Then. There is the large, older female, a good huntress. But there is something different about her. She sits off to the side, watching the pride, always distant. The skew-horned buffalo bull is the herd's pathfinder. And he has led it around the Saro territory for years. He is a survivor and senses the trouble ahead. There is a magical moment in any hunt, each time, just one first moment, a time somewhere between the initial stalking approach of individual lions and the coordinated run-in of a unified pride. At that moment, the decision is made. We will attack, and we will attack together. no fight like the fight for survival. 
and for the life of your offspring. But these lions will not accept failure. A charging buffalo doesn't strike fear in their hearts, it spurs them into a deadly game of attack and counter-attack, thrust and parry, a relentless duel. and like some invisible thread, it will lead them back to the injured calf time and time again, day after day after day. The males of the Tsaro pride. They are masters of all on this island, in particular the buffalo. They and their Tsaro females seldom let out of their sight. There is a significant new addition to the pride. Growing up against this backdrop of buffalo, he needs to be nimble and confident on his feet to become a Saro lion, a specialist buffalo hunter. Because lions are cooperative killers, he must also learn how to be part of the pride and obey the harsh rules that govern it. <laughs> He has a brief window, while under his mother's intense protection, to memorize the personality of each pride member. As a sorrow lion, his world is now a world of buffalo. Slowly, the clicking horns and occasional bellows will become as common to his ears as the sound of floodwaters rippling on the sand. Each day brings him closer to the time when he'll be ready to propel himself into the midst of the herd, unflinchingly throwing himself, just like his mother does, against the terrifying wall of horns. walk their own knife-edged path of survival, finding food and water, while all the time avoiding the dangers that will leave their bones scattered in the indignity of death. The buffalo are crossing back into his mother's territory. She has anticipated the path of the herd's return perfectly. Flush the herd and scan for the weak. This time she is alone, but she knows the gifts of this summer season, the newborn calves. Buffalo's senses, both of sight and smell, are well developed. Their hearing is excellent. These are intense and alert animals, but a sixth sense creeps through her now. She knows there is a lion nearby, and she knows it is coming for her calf. Sorrow lioness doesn't hesitate to follow.
the trade-off that Africa must make from time to time. Under the lion's inescapable surveillance, it is a constant effort just to survive. So each precious life that slips into existence in this game of life and death is a victory against the sentinels that scan the bushes for any sign of opportunity. Every delicate first step silently bolsters the herd against their decline under the relentless onslaughts they endure. Each wobble during the agonizing hour it takes to stabilize is a celebratory yell against the fates. And each successful birth is a tiny contract that keeps the system alive. The synchrony of births overwhelms the Tsaro pride with a flood of calves that outdoes their capacity to kill all the newborn. They're limited to what they can eat today, one calf at a time. Although many are killed, the majority of the baby buffaloes survive. As the buffalo start to move, the lions of the Tsaro pride feel their pangs of hunger begin to stir. Ahead will be a fast-moving game of life and death, for they must know that taking on a fully grown buffalo with nothing but claws and teeth has to be the most dangerous game of all. On this unique Okavanga island with its one herd of buffalo and three prides of lions, one would expect the nights to be filled with blood-curdling bellows. But strangely, these lions seldom hunt under the cover of darkness. So night time is the herd's chance to slip away to the far side of the island, or even across the river if they can. The lion's diligence has kept the herd contained within the Tsaro territory for weeks. While there has been a feast on this side of the channel, there has been a famine on the other. The lions to the north, the skimmer pride, has been without food for too long, and now their hunger drives them through the water. They are nowhere near the size of the Tsaro lionesses but they have other skills. Now the skimmer pride has to risk making an insurgent sortie. Just four small adult females with ten hungry and ineffectual cubs. They have to do this stealthily. They are taking a huge risk. If they panic the herd too early, the Tsaro females are bound to hear the chase and react. Too vigorous an attack and the cubs could fall under foot of a stampede. When a single female sees her target, the risk increases even more. The only option now is a frontal attack. This is almost suicidal.
incredibly, she fells an adult cow buffalo unaided and drowns its muffled bellows in the water. Their desperation sees off any intruders. A hurried meal is all they can risk for now. To the south, the big Tsaro females are ready and waiting. In a sophisticated and well-honed tactic of herding the buffalo, they first panic them with a strange growling charm. The object is not to attack, but to stampede the herd into the water. Only then do they pick off the struggling young as they flounder out of their depth. It is Silver Eye who makes the first contact, dragging her prey underwater to deliver mortal wounds before the mother can retaliate and rescue her calf. Then the hunt goes into phase two. Now, like sheepdogs, the lions herd the buffalo together, relentlessly pushing in. Clinical, this constant probing for weakness, the following through the floodwaters for up to seven hours at a time. The lone female hangs back for a moment, but the cub is eager to join in, despite its instinctive fear of water. Water is an element that all Saro lions must conquer early to become what they are, true swamp cats. And then the stabbing attacks begin. Each attack weakens the spirit of the herd. This is the hunt they were born to. And this is when the blood races, adrenaline coursing through their muscles, throbbing in their heads. The young are jostled between anxious mothers and defensive bulls, and this is what the lions have been waiting for, mistakes that, given time and constant pressure, are bound to happen. This is what the masters have been waiting for. Each kill is eagerly observed from a distance. The 
ready to add more battle scars to his profile if need be, he is here to claim his bounty. <laughs> The lionesses have come to accept this unchivalrous behaviour. It is their sacrifice for the protection that the males give to the pride. And knowing that the buffalo are about to escape across the river, they continue the hunt. The females that have run and hunted hard will need the next kill to be theirs. This kill must be large enough to both feed those that stayed back protecting the cub and sustain the lionesses that have been injured in this last attack. For the females, the next hunt had better succeed.